Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. On today's program, I'll be sharing a message about the importance of staying spiritually refreshed. Instead of being drained, God has a plan for us to live refreshed and renewed. Acts 3.20 promises us times of refreshing that are coming from the presence of the Lord. Join me for part five of the message, Staying Refreshed. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. And the scripture says that Paul the Apostle said, I was refreshed by your company. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, Pastor, I'm going to go to that church and see if they'll refresh me. Can I tell you, you're setting yourself up for failure? What you need to do is go into that church with a desire to bring refreshing to other people. Ah, Pastor, I'm going to show up and see if anybody will encourage me. Well, can I tell you a better thing to do? Why don't you show up and see if you can encourage anybody else? I'm thinking of that little poem. You know, I learned this one when I was a young man, but it's been a good one. And it was a guy that said, you know, I went out to find a friend, but I could not find one there. But then I went out to be a friend, and I found friends everywhere. Does that make sense? In other words, you got one person, they're going to sit in a corner, and they're going to just cross their arms. They're going to say, I'm going to try to find a friend. Well, I couldn't find one. But then there was another fellow, and he went out to be a friend, and he found friends everywhere. And so that's what we do. We refresh others. And as we refresh, we'll talk about that in a moment. God brings refreshing into our life. I want to just skip down here, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 13. Therefore, we are comforted. And besides our own comfort, we rejoice still more at the joy of Titus because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. In other words, Titus was a recipient of this fellowship that he had with other believers, and it brought refreshing into his life. Philemon 7 says, I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. So I would just say to each one of us tonight, add fellowship. You say, Pastor, I need more refreshing in my life. Well, look for good Christian fellowship. I'm going to give you a little secret. If you sit around talking politics all day, you know you're not going to get all edified. How many realize that? You're not going to be edified. But you talk about how the Word still works. God's Word works. You talk about the things that God, talk about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, what God's doing on the earth today. Talk about those things, and it'll bring refreshing into your life. Okay, now here's two more things, and we're going to wrap this up. Pastor, how can I be refreshed? How can I be refreshed? Now, this isn't a hard one, but it's a good one. Go somewhere where there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I mean, if you want to get refreshed, be in a refreshing environment. Pastor, I watched that murder mystery, three hours of it on Sunday night, went to bed. I don't know. I just felt really drained. Well, I got a little revelation for you. Don't watch three hours of a murder mystery and wonder why you're drained. You say, oh, Pastor, God wants me to have entertainment. I understand entertainment, but can I tell you, sometimes it's to the exclusion of your spiritual life. Here's what God wants. God wants wholeness in your life. He wants you to be well-rounded, spirit, soul, body. But sometimes that spirit department is being really starved out while the entertainment department is getting a little heavy. So what we need to do is make sure, are we really keeping our spirit renewed? Are we keeping our spirit refreshed? You know, I tell you, if you're, every time I get around there, I'm just drained. Every time I get around them, I'm just drained. I may have a little revelation for you. Maybe you don't need to be around them all the time. Every time I get around them, we always argue about the same thing. Well, you know, you're not probably going to change their mind. They're not going to change your mind. Your boat's just going to dig in deeper is what's going to happen here. We need times where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit You say, Pastor, are you for holy laughter? Do you believe in holy laughter? I believe in all laughter, holy and unholy. Amen. A merry heart does good like a medicine. 
Oh, they went to church and they were laughing in the Spirit. We thought that was kind of irreverent. You know what's really actually irreverent is when the Spirit of God is moving and you're sitting there indifferent and cold and, and pushing back on that. That's really irreverent. How many know if God says march around the walls of Jericho, if you're not marching, you're irreverent? It's just whatever the Lord says to you is what you need to be doing. So, you know, we need to just realize right now, whether you're conscious of it or not here tonight, you know there's angels in this room right now. You know what else? The name of Jesus, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. God's presence is here tonight. The presence of God, you brought it with you, and he's here individually in our lives. But yet when we come together, there's a corporate anointing. I'm going to tell you this. There's an anointing in this room right now that is different than if this was the book club. How many realize that? Do you realize that? There's an anointing different in here if this was like a sewing club. Do you understand what I mean? If this was like a cooking club or something, I mean, that's fine for those things. But what's beautiful when you get together with people of like precious faith, the Bible says one will put a 1,000 to flight, two will put 10,000 to flight. There's an anointing here tonight. And guess what happens? The more you talk like that, the more it just starts moving. I remember hearing about this pastor years ago. He said he went into this church, and they'd had night after night of meeting, and the people were tired. They'd been working all day and then going to this meeting at night. And he said one night in particular, people were just tired in their body. And the pastor got up to lead singing, and you know, people weren't really entering into singing. And then the pastor said, I tell you, the devil's in here tonight. The devil's binding people up tonight. You know, and he kept talking about the devil's this and the devil's that and the devil. And he said, the more... That pastor kept talking about the devils in the church. Everybody, boy, I mean, they just kind of got lower and lower. And then the guest speaker got up and said, you know, I tell you what, I got more confidence that God's in here tonight. And he began to brag about God and how God's in here by his spirit. And all of a sudden, everybody started coming alive. Well, you say, pastor, you think the devil comes in here? Well, if he is, we run him out in the name of Jesus Christ. Angels are in here tonight. I believe God will open our eyes in these last days where we don't just say it because it's in the Word, and that's the most important reason why we would say it, but we also say it by experience. We've seen them. We know that those angels are here tonight. So there's a time of outpouring that will take place in these last days, and we should cover that. We should come to church with that desire. Lord, pour it out. Pour it out. You say, well, Pastor, we're already in the latter rain. This is how the Lord helped me to understand this. Because, you know, sometimes people are always praying, pour it out, pour it out. And I'm thinking, okay, well, actually, we're in the latter rain. We're in the last days. The Spirit is poured out on the earth. But just like naturally speaking, hear this. There can be times when it's raining, and then all of a sudden, it's like, it's not just raining. It's pouring down. And then it kind of has a time when it lights up. Then it's like, wow, I mean, it's like pouring down out there right now. What do you understand God is wanting just to pour it down? I mean, yeah, it's raining, but Lord, we thank you for outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that it's just powerful moves of the Holy Spirit. All right, here's my last thing. Pastor, I want to be refreshed, and it ties into what I said earlier about fellowship. Here's a good one for you to remember, Proverbs eleven twenty five: A generous person will prosper. Notice this. Proverbs eleven twenty five. whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. That's a promise. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And that's the way it reads that particular passage in the New International, and I like that one. When you refresh others, God will bring refreshing into your life. You encourage others, you know what God will do? He'll bring encouragement into your life. And here's what we can do. We can always plant a seed for our harvest. Well, I wish I had more friends. Well, sow some seeds. Well, Pastor, I don't know. I just wish this need was met in my life. Well, sow a seed towards that need. I wish my spouse was more complimentary. Well, you start being complimentary. Well, when they start, I'll start. And they're on the other end saying, when they start, I'll start. So you're both in a, we call that a standoff. Most people like a compliment. Have you discovered that? And you don't have to be fake. You don't have to be phony. How many know the world is going to have enough discouragement? The devil, I mean, let's face it, when he shows up, he's out to kill, still, and destroy, and he's out to kill your joy. 
And so, you know, the body of Christ, we come in and we're refreshing, we're lifting people up, we're talking the word. You never know what people are going through. So be an encouragement wherever you go. Amen. What's that statement? You know, be kind to everybody you meet today because everybody you meet today is going through a challenge. I remember one time I had a service. This is years ago. We were in the fellowship hall. I hadn't gotten married yet. I was just started pastor, and I had this Sunday morning. And I tell you what, the power of God was on me. I was preaching. We had this great service. Gifts of the Spirit were in operation. I got in my car after I shook everybody's hand, and I'm driving home. And I'm driving down 39th Street. The next thing I knew, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was a highway patrolman pulled me over. And I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, how could I be this much in the spirit and still mess up like this? So anyway, he pulled me over and come by and got my driver's license and my insurance information. And, well, where are you going? How many know I have to say my heart? I went from in the spirit to in the flesh a little bit. Well, I've been in church. <laughs> Had a good service. I didn't say that. But anyway, just coming out of church, sorry, you know, I was just respectful and and, you know, that guy come back, I knew, I'm thinking, wow, you know, no telling what this is going to cost me. I was just right down here on the other side of the Kilpatrick. He come back, and he gave me my car, driver's license, and he, well, I'm just going to give you a warning today. And you say, oh, Pastor, that's just a small thing. I'm still talking about it 20 years later, you know. <laughs> if I found him today, if I tracked him down, he's probably retired somewhere today, and I asked him, I said, do you remember doing that? He'd say, I have no idea. I have no idea that ever happened. But see, I remember it. And here's where I'm going to reverse that on you. You know, there's people out there, you can do something kind for them. You can do something merciful for them. And you know, in five years from now, you may not ever remember it happened. But you know, for them, you bless their day. You helped them out. And you know what happens when you bless others? God will refresh you. God will bring encouragement to you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you today, Lord, that you're here by your spirit. And Lord, we just love you tonight, and I just pray for our church family tonight. I pray for this group that's here tonight, Lord. Maybe they want greater spiritual refreshing in their life. I pray, Father, they would just increase their time of worship. I pray, Father God, that they would spend more time just praying in the language of the Spirit. I pray, God, that they would spend more time fellowshipping with other people of like precious faith. And Lord God, I pray that they would see the value of encouraging other people to be an encourager and sow a seed out of their own need and realize that on any given day in a world that's filled with rude people whenever we're gracious, in a world that's filled with harsh people and ungrateful people whenever we're gracious and grateful, Lord, we do impact people's lives. And I believe with all my heart as we bring refreshing into other people's lives in our time of need, that Lord will receive and you'll have the right people in our lives to bring refreshment into our lives. Amen. Thanks for joining me for today's broadcast. God has a plan for you to live your Christian life being refreshed by the Holy Spirit. In John 7, 38, Jesus said, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. God wants to use your life to bring refreshing to others. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.